They say that if you stick a wooden rod into the front wheel of a motorcycle, the bike will instantly flip into the air, and this kind of scene pops up in movies all the time. But does that really happen in real life? To find out, Adam needed to build a wooden rod launcher. After all, just throwing a stick by hand wouldn't exactly be scientific. The motorcycle was already prepped, and its front wheel would be spinning in place at 50 miles per hour. Then, the launcher would fire a wooden rod at the spokes. On the first attempt, the stick was deflected by the spokes and bounced back, so they ran a second test under the same conditions. This time, the rod got jammed in the wheel and damaged the spokes. Turns out, whether the stick actually gets lodged in the wheel is a matter of probability, and since this was a static test, even if the rod managed to stop the wheel, the motorcycle wouldn't flip into the air. To get a clearer answer, they needed to run a real-world test. So the plan was to mount the motorcycle on the back of a pickup truck. Once the truck reached the target speed, the bike would be released to coast under its own momentum. Then, the launcher would fire the rod into the spinning wheel. To improve their chances of success, they swapped the front wheel for a forged rim that was stronger and had wider gaps between the spokes. Now the question is, what's going to happen? It's said that a taut steel cable can slice a person in half if it snaps. There have even been similar incidents reported on aircraft carriers. When an arresting cable broke, it whipped across the deck. Fortunately, one quick-thinking crew member reacted in time, preventing a disaster. To get to the bottom of this myth, Jamie started with small-scale tests to determine the direction the rope would snap back. He first secured a rope between two ends of a table and then cut the tight rope with a blade. As expected, the rope recoiled straight upward. To make the rope swing sideways instead, he placed an obstacle next to the cutting point. Sure enough, when the rope broke, it whipped sideways toward the other end. Next, he placed an obstacle in the middle. This time, the rope struck the object with surprising force. Moving on to a larger test, they set up a steel cable between two pillars and placed an obstacle in the center to alter the cable's whipping direction. The goal was to hit a test subject placed in the danger zone, but no one was willing to volunteer for this kind of experiment. So Adam had to buy a few pigs to continue testing. To make their bodies more similar to human tissue, he filled the pigs with a layer of gel. With everything ready, the full-scale experiment began. Rumor has it that if you pour methanol into a metal drum and light it, the drum will shoot off like a rocket. To put this myth to the test, Grant started with a small-scale experiment using a regular water bucket. Sure enough, after pouring in methanol and lighting it, the bucket actually propelled itself forward. That gave the rumor some credibility, so they decided to scale things up and built a larger steel barrel for testing. But when they ignited the methanol, the barrel didn't budge. They suspected the problem was with the ratio of methanol to air inside the drum. With no other options, they went back to small-scale tests to figure out the ideal methanol-to-air mix. At the same time, they also upgraded the barrel's exhaust nozzle. Once the adjustments were made, the results were dramatic. The barrel's power shot up significantly. Now it was time for the final test. With the help of an expert, they built a full-on super barrel car. The key feature? A one-way valve installed on the barrel, which helped preserve thrust and prevent energy loss during the explosion. Once everything was ready, they fired it up. The barrel car ignited and roared to life, accelerating rapidly. Powered by continuous bursts of thrust, it reached a top speed of 60 miles per hour. The myth was confirmed. It's said that Japanese ninjas could stay submerged underwater for hours using a breathing tube, lying in wait for their target. And the moment their target appeared, they'd blow a poison dart through the tube to deliver a fatal strike. To test this claim, the team needed to break down the entire process. First, how long can a person realistically stay underwater? Tori volunteered to take on the challenge. The water was kept at the average temperature of a Japanese lake. To prevent rapid body heat loss during the test, Tori coated himself in animal fat and put on a ninja outfit. Then, using a bamboo breathing tube, he submerged himself to begin the test. At first, Tori felt fine, but by the 45-minute mark, his body started visibly shivering. That's because the human body loses heat 32 times faster in water than in air. After holding out for an hour, he began having trouble breathing and finally had to end the test. If an average person can last an hour underwater, it's safe to say a well-trained ninja could easily handle it. Next came testing the dart blowing mechanism. After trying a few different designs, they found that placing a narrow metal pipe inside a bamboo tube provided the highest accuracy for launching the dart. But another issue quickly emerged, refraction. Underwater aiming is distorted because of how light bends at the surface. Unless a ninja understood this physics principle from a young age, they'd never be able to hit a target above water from below. 
To illustrate this, Carrie first fired at a target's head from above the water, then tried the same shot from below. The results were all over the place. She couldn't hit a vital spot no matter how hard she tried. Finally, they put the entire myth to the test. First, they submerged and stayed hidden for 10 minutes. Then, while underwater, they tried to load the poison dart into the bamboo tube. That's when a new problem showed up. The moment your mouth leaves the tube, it starts to fill with water. So when they finally blew into it, the whole thing acted like a squirt gun. Not only did water shoot out, but the dart had lost all of its momentum. In the end, the poisoned dart failed to fly, and the myth was busted. They say that on April 16, 1866, a mysterious box leaking an oily substance was delivered to a U.S. bank. One curious employee decided to crack it open with a hammer, and that single action triggered a massive explosion. The blast leveled the entire building and shook homes over 400 meters away. What kind of substance could cause such terrifying destruction. It was none other than nitroglycerin, first synthesized in 1847 by Italian chemist Ascanio Sobrero. Originally, it was intended for use in industrial and construction applications, but its power quickly caught the attention of explosives manufacturer Alfred Nobel. He saw massive commercial potential in nitroglycerin and began building factories to produce it at scale. Unfortunately, three of his facilities blew up during the process. It soon became clear nitroglycerin was far more dangerous than it was practical. That led to the creation creation of laws banning the transport of raw nitroglycerin, regulations that are still in place today. Because of that, finding pure, unaltered nitroglycerin nowadays is nearly impossible. Jesse is one of the few people in the U.S. legally licensed to produce nitroglycerin. Modern nitroglycerin must first be desensitized and diluted to make it safe for transport. Once it arrives at the testing site, it's carefully recombined to restore its original properties. And this small bottle? That's the real deal. Pure nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin is extremely extremely sensitive to impact and shock. Even the slightest bump can set it off in a devastating explosion. Next up, an impact test. But after several drop tests failed to trigger a detonation, the scattered nitroglycerin became dangerously unstable, so they switched tactics, this time using a mechanical hammer to strike it. An automated hammer was set up and the test began. Whoa! Heads up, heads up! And just like that, boom, a dramatic reminder of how insanely powerful nitroglycerin is. And keep in mind, that was just three milliliters. So naturally, Adam's next move is to go even bigger. 